Hi, Robin Preston here, member for Hawkesbury. I'm back in Bilpin, just like you've been in recent times, supporting the businesses that have been hit hard by the bushfires that we've recently had. And look, it's important that we get to learn a little bit about what they're experiencing at the moment, what the challenges are, and how we as a government can help small business. So we're going to take a look at that today, and I'm pleased to say we've got some very special guests coming. So today I thought we'd head up to two businesses around Bilpin. Firstly, I'm going to go to Hillbilly Cider. It's got a great reputation up here. And then I thought we'd go down to see Margaret and the family business down there. It's the Bilpin Fruit Bowl. You know, as you come up Bell's line of road towards Bilpin, you see the scarring landscape that's been caused by the bushfire. But I'm really heartened by the community and how it's pulled together. Farmers, businesses, uh, just generally people that live here, they love this place. It's a, it has a village environment and I've seen how nurturing they can be for each other. I thought I'd bring a bit of muscle to Hawkesbury today and how good was it that we had Michaela Cash and Damien Tudorhope, Federal and State Ministers for Small Business, out touring the Hawkesbury, talking one-on-one -on -one with businesses to hear what really is needed for them to recover. So you, did you lose any uh, oh, building just all materials of, or...? Yeah, the, all the building materials, a lot of them burned around us. Yeah. So we were just putting stuff out yeah. around us. All the irrigation caught fire and then within two seconds the place was alight. Yeah. All 100, 360 degrees. The neighbour's house was starting to burn. I went out and put that out with a shovel. Oh, I had water for about five seconds. Yeah. Problem is when it goes out of the headlines, and, and gen yeah, generally the, no, when the emergency is on, mm -hmm. uh, everyone is really concerned, and certainly the charitable donations were amazing. Mm. But now that it's over, mm -hmm. the really uh, some of the greatest trauma is going to be the recovery. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and as you say, some of these people will not re yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. won't recover. Uh, no. So I mean, you're talking about kind of at a government level people coming together, but at a community level. Yeah. We all supported each other, we went and helped clear each other's properties and you actually talk to people and drop everything to actually have a conversation. So yes. there's yeah. a lot of positives that come out of it. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. um, I, um, you know, all the volunteering, so I was volunteering to feed the crews. We had between two and four hundred yeah. RFS yeah. to feed every night yeah. in Bilpin. Yeah. And I was talking to young kind of 18 and 20 year old men and women, boys and girls that are from Sydney, Northern Beaches, all over that have come up here and working side by side with 40 year olds, 60 year olds, all fighting fires. And you couldn't help thinking, you know, teenagers get a bad reputation and these are really good kids. The Bilpin Fruit Bowl was impacted heavily. It's, it's an iconic uh, landmark in the area. It's a place of destination and it has been for 35 years. They've lost 6,000 trees and all their netting, which was protecting the orchard, has gone. You're looking at 50 acres of netting that is needing to be replaced. Yeah, but I'm yeah, almost yeah. positive that you... In yeah. this block, there's 20 acres. Yeah. Yep. This netting has to completely come down, the poles, the structure, the whole lot. Yep. Got to be 100% replaced. Yep. $60,000 an acre. Yes. There's 20 acres yep. there. Okay. This netting on this side, where it's all up, You'll see holes in it everywhere. See yeah. all those holes? See the embers are coming. That's the ember attack. Oh, yeah, right There's 20 acres there. The structure's fine. The netting needs to be replaced. Right. Because if we get a windstorm or a hailstorm, that's gone. Yeah. So the rest of our crop is gone. And Margaret, you've got about eight farms that would need help with that? Yeah, probably about eight in this area. There's trellising. See? Now you can see mm. at the end of the row there's a pole on yeah. the end of every row. These trees are grown on trellis wire. Yep. And along here all these poles have burnt. And there's poles in the middle. So there's seven kilometers, 75 rows of apple trees along here. Mm. So there's seven kilometers of trellising that has to be taken down and replaced. <laughs> seven kilometers of irrigation, plastic irrigation, on the ground that's all melted. 
So we're over two million dollars. Yeah, so for you guys, it's yeah. It's not but we own replacing it. You can't afford yeah. to do that. How can, can't and afford then you've to got do five it. years before you get your yield again. We've got three years. There's no trees available for three years. Yeah. That's then we've got to wait four years before we get a crop on those trees. So, so that's seven, seven years. years when these trees were in their first year of income this year. They were earning us money this year and now they're gone. <coughs> so this is where the local mm. economic recovery plans come into play mm. because that's quite separate to anything else that is currently available. Mm and whether or not it's by that mechanism, which is still being worked out between the states and, and, and us, yeah. but whether or not there will actually be funding via that particular recovery plan because you are such an integral part of the community. Yeah, so well, that's, that's something we're going to have to look at, yeah. Sure. Yeah, okay. That's why yeah, yeah. we wanted you to come and see this. Yeah, no, no, yeah, thank no, you for that, because yeah, this, yeah. Of what you've just said puts a very, very different slant on a few things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is a community that, that will recover, will we will bounce back from this. It's going to take a long time, and it's going to take a long time to heal. But I know that together we have the support of the New South Wales government, the federal government, the local councils, all three levels of government are working together to support the community that we so love. I mean, we're all part of this together. We need to work together to look after what is so precious to us. This is a unique tourist area here, and it's been scarred but it will come back and we know that in its prime, in its beauty, it's a showpiece and we want to get that back.